Go on, Mac. I'm going to try and not cough throughout this entire segment before we go into the next <laughs> game. Otherwise, I'm going to hit the mute button as much as possible. Sanox is the next one we're going into. And these games today have definitely been another level to the rest yeah, of the week. They have. Sanok on its own has always been the more aggressive game yeah. that we've seen. So what the hell is going to happen now? I can't even begin to predict what we're going to see. Like, and, and I remember you saying to me that you weren't like a huge fan of, of <coughs> Miramar because it, it was, you know, tend to be kind of boring early on. But with the two It's just rounds, a slower start yeah, Miramar, yeah. With that Miramar game, you kind of go, how can it heat up anymore? Are these teams ready? Have they been, I don't know, burnt out a little bit too much from the first three games, so to speak? Have they just kind of gone, okay... We could see a calmer San Juan yeah. game. It is always potential, right, for things to kind of change. If the other yeah. games have been so aggressive, maybe they do swap it around this time. You've had a look at the total points you see on there. No tag team, not far away from that top eight spot. The same for El Gigante and Brute Force. PGA team, though, despite having the win today, they're still down in 12. And Team Unique, we've been seeing them get kills, but it's just not enough just yet. And for the likes of MJ Esports, huge potential on four kings, you're probably not getting it done in the next day or so. Um, because of that win that came out from Northern Lights in Miramar, that's kind of pretty much secure. I wouldn't say, of course, like I would say that's their top eight spot on the button with 193 points. Yeah. It's 33 points ahead of Jokers in seventh place, so it just means that, you know, has that nice chunky gap. If okay. you have. I'm about to like 200 okay. IQ this bitch because Northern Lights... 193 points, but we yeah. watched them. You said they slowed down this week. Maybe they're just thinking, we knew we were going to qualify. We've already made enough points to be in top eight. So they're just holding back, making everyone think that they've slowed down or not been as good. And they're going to come into the next one when both groups put together. And then it's going to win mm. like the first few games and be like, ha, look, surprise, I got you. <laughs> just out of nowhere. I don't know. I'm really like going far-fetched with this. I, I can just imagine yeah. though. Like, So back in the days when I was playing pro-level CS, and this okay. is many years ago because I'm an old man, but... I would do things like you would call tactics, right? And then once you qualify, but you have to play some of them group games which were kind of only beneficial yeah. for the other team. I'd just be like, yep, cool, let's just, we don't care about this one. And I'd just throw out the most random tactics. And then people would be like, oh, they predicted, watch your demos and predict your tactics for the next one. And you can use it against them. Yep. Yes, PUBG is very different in that sense. But there is an element of that. Like 100%. if teams start to underestimate you because they go, well, look, pff, that was embarrassing towards the end week. Then they forget about how good you were at the beginning. Mind games. When when a team when a team becomes quite predictable with their strategies, with their rotations, and with their overall gameplay, other teams will expose that. They'll position themselves in a way that they can take them out, and suddenly you can find yourself if you're that team that's predictable. Going well, what do we do next? And that also comes down to having a, a really um, responsive and and engaging IGL that can that has that backup that plan that has a kind of plan A, plan B, plan C, both on based on playing trajectory, based on, on how the game is going throughout, and he's able to respond and kind of go, okay, look, we're not doing the same thing as last time. We are going to be um, um, you know, reactive and we will make better call-outs in these games. But this is Sanhok being put under way, the playing trajectory. Look, it's Sanhok, it's a small map. Most of the time, the teams can get to where they want to, as usual. El Giganten hold on to the corner of that southern island that overlooks the mainland. And at North Island, you have huge potential down in ruins. We do have a southwestern circle. Most most of the circles in, in um, San Hock, I, I don't know it, you know, percentage-wise, but generally speaking, the majority of the circles do end up being in the south, the southwestern side of um, Sanhok, so there's kind of no real surprise there. But what is interesting is a lot of these teams are spread out quite, you know, quite largely in the Sanhok map as a team themselves. Now let's see how it goes down. I'm excited for this one yep. on another level just because <laughs> the day has been so crazy from these guys. I really want to see how teams are changing things up. Because you know that today was crazy, and the fact that these teams yep. know tomorrow's the last day. I Okay, I haven't yet to see true hot dropping. I'm not seeing crazy hot dropping in contenders yet. I'd love to see it. I keep telling these teams, hey, if you've got nothing to lose, sod it, go for it. What, what's the worst that can happen? Like, hot drop and see if you can make the most of it. We see You might PL. catch them off guard. Yeah, exactly, see? So, let some of these contenders teams take the risk. Why not? But 
I'm wondering what it's going to come down to because today's been lit. Tomorrow could be even just another level of insanity. But this Sanok game is going to be a very telling sign to me on how teams want to approach this. And everyone's gone back to their usual positions. It's all going to work out so far. But the rotation down here to the south is going to be quite an interesting one because the bridges you've got to use and get across are all heavily occupied. With the map being smaller, how Sanok plays out, yep. these close-range fights really do become a mythical thing. Now, when we look at the teams that have taken advantage of Sanhok as a map, as a newly introduced map in Phase 3, you have Team Moops who got 59 points in the five Sanhok, in the six Sanhok games, should it, no, five Sanhok games, my apologies. You then also have PG-18 getting 50 points. You have Jokers getting 58 points. So all of those three teams, along with even a couple of others, have managed to extract the most out of Sanhok so far. I want to know, have the other teams kind of picked up on that? Have they done the VOD reviews and looked at what the likes of Tempest, PG-18 and Jokers have done on this map and kind of gone, okay, we should look to either do something similar or echo it in some way that we can extract more points for our team ourselves. And, and even, when we, we, even when I was looking at the overall standings, I took away the points that the teams have occupied um, in, Sa in Sanhok so far in Group B. And I found that there's a couple of positional changes that would have held out where Red Foxes, who haven't had the best um, of Sanhok games, would have actually moved up into third overall at the start of today. So maybe if they can get a better Sanhok game, they will climb themselves up even further. Now let's watch how this one's going to play out. Some early fights going on. Joker's on a fast rotation around Ruins. They've got to be very careful, though, because they have to get this information. They don't know yep. what they're going into yet. Look how many teams already... Okay, so we have Jokers, Air Station Mike, and Huge Potential all going across the same bridge, all fighting for this same part of the area. This is, <laughs> this is what I mean. This is where this circle is going to make it so interesting because they're literally driving on top of each other. Moon, he's been a superstar for this Jokers team. He's watching it all go down, and he's playing it smart. He's not trying to engage just yet because he's like... Well, I've got the information, I can play off of this, and my teammate yep. can now go over the bridge and I can join up with them. Keep the numbers game, really smart stuff from him. And because Set was separated and had gone ahead and probably would have spotted out a, a member or two of Huge Potential, they would have said, okay, let Air Station Mike and Huge Potential go at each other and we'll third party and pick up the pieces because that's a big part of what Sanok is. You third party your opponents. Clib, <laughs> clib, <laughs> clib. He's got 20 bullets. He's got a six times. He can do a lot of damage, but he is on his own. And he's close enough by. They don't want to spot him out, though. This is where it could get very dicey. Oh, did Meta bait? He's like, did I get seen? Am I aware? And he's jumping now as well. Clip, I trust. Oh, 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 no. Oh, Jeff Les. And Kofi. Ah! So much damage done. No one went down, but now they know. Did he barrel out another nade? It's not going to go. It does. He gets a double knock in and he shoots onto Meta Bay. Clip. The one-man army, the solo pro, trying to get the job done. Taking additional shots. Got to be careful, though. Freenop's the only one up in it. He hasn't got any more grenades to use now, either. Can Freenop help his teammates out? Hanny's coming in to give him the defense. He spots him out. They're going to get white. Red Fox is under pressure, ripped apart, and Clib gets the four, man. What a play from Tempest. Oh, my God. I said Red Foxes have not had... Good Sanhok games, I'm telling you, that, it, that just it gets worse. It gets worse, completely annihilated. But you cannot take away from what Clip did there as a one-man show, and then with the team follow-up, he was so calculated. And we talk about how teams and how some players they take their time, they wait, they get the information, and they're accurate with their shots. Of course, the double grenade that came out was so perfect. He then responded with the third knockdown. Of course, it yeah, just ended up in that squad wipe. The skill it takes to just yeah. not even press the trigger. Because how many players, we've all been in these games where we play yeah. PUBG, you see someone in front of you, you just go, cool, bang, and that's it, right? And then you may miss it, you may whiff it. Clib, that was beautiful. I tip my hat to you, my friend. As ASM, they've not had a good day so far. The consistency has slightly fallen back. Only in today, though. Only in today. Yep. And Grishka Power is now the one applying pressure onto the rest of them. Jazz is going to go down. Smoke ain't helping you when the nade's nope. coming out, buddy. Nope. Oh, oh no. So Moops is getting involved, though. Ooh. Double's taking a few shots at him. And this is what happens. 
Yep. You make some noise, you focus down, and you've always... And this is where the best players you see are the ones actively always scouting around. They'll take the shots, they'll look at a certain player, look at a certain team, and then also, okay, wait a second, our backs, we've made some noise. Anything can happen. Fake gets a return knockdown onto Manny. Try and start a bit of a push potentially onto um, Four Kings. But the revive will come out quite easily. Aldo tells Era, folks are, I think they're both throwing grenades out. The rock will protect and now they'll just push away. Oh no. Grishka power then picked off and then they. <laughs> oh, he gets the kill stolen away. The boom's like, oh, I've got one. Nope, yeah. not for long. Double then picks up another. Oh, ASM, wow. though, they could be running into the fire. Maybe back away now. You've got the kills. Yep. You've taken down four kings. Do you really need to fight on this hill now? You already lost Jazza. Definitely not. They will definitely want to back away. Go into your compound. Stay protected. I know where station Mike. They like to be aggressive, but play a little bit more intelligently. It's not worth it in Sandhawk. I love this from Tempest. You yeah. just saw it on the map screen. Fair play, Nemref is going to get the kill onto Ghost Star. On the map screen at the moment, it's slightly covered now by this small mini screen. And the mini screen this time is needed because we want to see Nemref get these kills and what he can do. And he will go straight in for the finish off. But what they're doing is they're going to go across yep. now to Bantai and Camp Charlie. There is no one currently activated there. No one is in this position. So Tempest is going to come in. No one would have seen him. There'll be like some stealth ninja team down in the corner yeah. of this circle. Uh, this is huge. What? Tempest. Oh my God, Clib starts this off. And what is it with today? Today has been a, a, a whole nother level, Cormac. Well, I, I'm definitely not surprised with Tempest in, in, in San Hawk because like I said, they've dominated the map. Yeah. I'm really surprised that nobody's occupied Camp Charlie. I regard <laughs> as a poor man's boot camp just from a classic point of view because it's like, you know, if you're going to hot drop anywhere, hot drop in boot camp. Do you know how that works, but, by the way? A poor man's boot camp, like... Teams go on boot camps, right? You go to a boot camp to get better. Yeah. Camp Charlie's like the kiddie version. It's like less good. <laughs> it's kindergarten boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's a much better So a boot way camp, you've got like the drill sergeants and everything. At Camp Charlie, you've just got this matey boy called Charlie who's semi in shape telling you what to do. <laughs> there you go, guys. I've broken uh, down how this map works in Camp Charlie and boot camp. That's all you need perfect, to know. Perfect. Perfect. Where have you been? Banks, where have you been all my life? I tell you. Slowly dying from pro <laughs> injuries. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, but now, um, so as this game continued, it slowed down a little bit, surprisingly, with all the action that seemed to have happened. Oh, that's a good molly. Oh, well, did it go? Oh, it didn't go in. He oh, just no missed way. it. Oh, that nade went in, though. Recrent's able to get the job done. That's two players knocked. I think that's only Norkis up in it, right? Because Ghost Star went down earlier. So PG-18, Nemrev got the first kill, and now they're looking for the full squad that. wipe. Wait, just, Pop. Where's the I last just one? want to point out the little thing that Re Re Recrent did there. First of all, he pr he crouched down and looked underneath the um, underneath the the house just to make sure nobody was there. And then he opened the door, waited a sec just in case somebody was waiting to take him out. And then he went in with the rest of his team. The little things like that make such a huge difference. It really does. There needs to be a big difference, though, in how O'Connell wants to approach this situation because his teammates aren't that near him, and he is quite outnumbered. You've got Yannick and Nailak around the side to lock Jokers in, but O'Connell was out there in the open firing onto them. He is moving back now, as you can see on the map screen, which is good. Oh, Tempest actually taking a fight against Brute Force. So they moved up from Bantai all the way to Camp Charlie. So they've gone for Camp Charlie as the, the lesser option of the boot camps, as we were talking about earlier. But Clib's playing the long distance game, and I like that. And he's even going to get himself a crate for it. How huge will this be? Because we didn't see it, but maybe Tempest have got both those crates. Because he was close to the wall. Like, this is a possibility. Yeah. They could be geared up beyond madness. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> They're going to be Terminators in this jungle map. As we do see Deep trying to avoid those shots. Closes the door. It gets open. It gets shot out. Did he throw the nade? Nope. Uh, uh, he throws a, sm a smoke okay, grenade. Okay, smoke's good. I thought he tried to throw the nade while the guy yep. was chasing him down, but Greg won't hunt him down any longer. They're both going to try and heal up. More nades coming in. Greg's got to be careful. That was a flashbang. Well-timed. I think that may have just caught Greg. And he'll just be forced to back away now. Perfectix and Spiro trying to help Deep out. He's just taking damage after damage at the moment. Now, if they really want to help him out, yeah, Perfectix, you need to get in there. Yeah. Because you can't have Deep take this fight 1v1. Spiro just spotted him running away, so the information's had, and they will at least know that yep. for now they can back away. But they need to stick together as a unit, because Unique are doing exactly that. They've grouped back up. 
That was an intelligent play from Greg. Heard those footsteps of Perfectix joining him and was able to back off. But now, okay, bro, gets a knockdown onto Dez out. But PVVM responds and says, hey, you knocked down my friend. I'm going to knock you out. Trading effectively is so key within this. Yeah. Anything you can do, I can do better. Just a waiting game. It's the standoff here from Unique. They're on the edge of the server. It won't be hard for them to push in, but they do have to deal with some of the Northern Lights players. And OK Bro is the first one they will deal with. There's Tempest. Can he? He's going to find kills on the no tag team elsewhere. They're still fighting this off. And what they've done is go west from Camp Charlie and push straight into, yep. nor, um, into no tank team. So Tempest still on the hunt, still looking to do damage. And they've got plenty of level three gear. Of course, as Jokers and Four Kings <laughs> looking for each other. Moon was knocked out. But with the smoke grenade, we'll most likely be able to be revived. The boom is in the building beside looking for it. As Blasson is just going to disengage and kind of go, look, you know, it's not really worth it. Tell you what isn't worth it as well is Northern Lights. Firstly, they went up against the likes of Team Unique. And now they're facing shots and kills on their side at the hands of Eastern Bull Wildcats as this phase four shows up. And it centers up quite nicely. No real hard shift. But look who is inside the center of the circle. Team Moops. And Moops, where they're fighting from, right? This is such a good place to fight from and get killed. This is a compound you want to fight from and you actively can. Because you can keep everyone away from here. And already we're seeing the shots come out. This is the beauty of Sanok. Where you get compounds like this, it's not one where you're locked in and you struggle to fight these kills. At any point, Moops can pop out and do some additional damage here. So if they want to take a win, they can start getting active right now. And we've still got 46 players alive and 15 teams. That would be huge. Well, there's a reason why they've scored 59 points so far in these Samhawk games that we've had in Group B. That's just in Sanok? Yep. Ooh, Moops, okay. Yep. So Moops and Tempest looking to try and go head-to-head -head on Sanok Gods when it comes to Group B. Just approaching the 15-minute mark now. Phase 4 ticking away. Deep, nicely done. Finds himself Greg from Unique, finally getting revenge on that after being chased around the building for quite some time. But now they've got to get their way into this circle, and it's quite oh, far no. to go. The grenade from Hawk takes two knockdowns on the Sandin and PVVM, leaving just Deza on his own, trying to make his way into circle. He gets one knockdown to Halo Senpai. As we did see, four kings get eliminated at the hands of Jokers. And the two confirmed kills for Hawk leaves him in a situation where he, with the rest of his team, can get those knockdowns and push into the circle. Now, Hawk. Amorous, will he even be, if he gets revived, will he be able to heal up in time? Because the damage is going to be quite high. Yeah, it's phase four, so he's just going to run yeah. forward. It's not too bad. But, oh, no, he's back on the floor. Not enough time. Not going to work out. Hawk's now running as well. He will outrun this, but if he takes any shots, it's going to be game over because you won't be crawling out of that. And brute force do go down. The shots come their way. 13th place is all they'll manage to achieve this time around as MJE. We can see them. They're going to go and crouch their way in towards Ooh. Tempest. MJ, I've seen you do some good stuff. I'm just saying, you're running into a stacked up Tempest yep. who started with annihilating a whole squad and then found two crates. Look at the weapons these guys have in their hands. Not just a weapon. Juno's been spotted. Ah. Oh. Man, they're doing well to survive. Oh, oh, no, no. Just as I said it, they get taken out. It was just like we were both waiting for it to happen. There was no point of even talking. It was like, okay, this is going to get awkward. Because they were outnumbered. They were outgunned. And the position was massively an advantage of Tempest, who must be near close to 10 kills now. Be interesting to see. As we did also lose Northern Lights, they were only going to last for so long as the Phase 5 circle did go a little bit southwest. So team moves, they're still inside it. And James is still alive. Don't worry, guys. He's still breathing. I didn't die. He not this quite time. Died just yet. Oh, well, there's Station Mike mm. on the west side looking for the side of huge potential. And Molotov is going to go out and just spread onto the grass. Quite nicely. Oh, no. Oh, no way. Burn, baby. Burn. Da -da. There he goes. Huge potential being taken apart now. Air Station Mike getting the job done. Daz Jazza went down very early on, right? Yeah. We'll see him at the very beginning of the game. He bit the dust. If they can bring Fake up, they've still got a good chance within this. And Clib, he's still adding headshots. Clib, headshot machine with the bolts. 
some ridiculous stuff from Tempest. They are outside the circle, so they have to push their way through. They have to be aggressive onto the likes of no tag team. O'Connell was knocked out. We did, of course, lose another team. That was, of course, huge potential, unfortunately. It's PGA Ian looking down from the north side, overlooking the likes of Air Station. Mike El Gigante Norcus, his last one standing for his side. As yes, the kill is confirmed onto no tag team with Give It also taken out, leaving just Yannick alive. Nope, not quite. As we lose no tag team in ninth place, down to 18's 23. Do you know what tempers are right now? They're like a bulldozer moving through the forest and everything that gets in their way just gets run straight over. Solid level three gear, solid weaponry as well. They've had the two crates. They've been annihilating teams, picking up all their bits as well. Now they're coming onto Moops. Hjort starts off straight away. He didn't stand a chance. Reggie just poked out and went, oh God, game over. Then he's gonna get finished off as well. No problems at all. Clib looking to do further damage and they know exactly where more of these players are gonna be hiding. They understand the position and Hanny just spots double at the top. Is he gonna go for it? Shots come out and nice work from Double. He'll go on for the finish off. He's gonna try and fight back against them. He jumps down by his teammate's side as well. Three versus two here. Can the moops hang on? Hawk is, Hawkey, sorry, is too far away. Well, if there's any team that can shut Tempest down in, in this moment, in this game, is Team Moops, but it's going to be tough. It's gonna to be very tough indeed. Surprisingly, Tempest are actually only on nine kills overall. Can they make it 11 with this squad wipe? and push on forward. Time is against these two teams because with the circle shift going up northwards, it's going to be closing in right about in the next 30 seconds. And even though it's gonna take a bit of a longer time for it to close in, it's still going to be time consuming. It's the waiting game here for Clip, trying to get a, a side swipe in if possible. Yep. He spotted out Moon by the looks of it and takes a few shots. Wookie's had a nade to his side, though, so he's going to find himself knocked down. Can Hjort bring him up? <coughs> Reckon he can as Wookie Bookie gets taken out by K. Doran. So that's put Tempest on two there. players, yeah. But, so moops were too much for him. Yeah, well, and also with Klib just kind of flanking to the left, kind of ignoring team moops. And I actually don't think that's a bad idea. Because in those compounds, there wasn't really kind of much as a three-man team. <laughs> Team Moops could have done. Nice clip <laughs> finds the shots onto Moon. He was proned and trying to hide. They know exactly where the boom is as well. 19 bullets left in the clip. He's looking to do more damage. Clip trying to oh land the shots. God. He hits the headshot and Clip gets the job done. The kill comes his way and Jokers go out in seventh. Although they, he did get a little bit of help from Air Station Mike. That's one thing to point out but gives him a bit more space to move in. And he's not stopping. He's getting closer to the side of Air Station Mike. All the while, Hjort was knocked down and will go down to the play zone as we are going to see it move on down. It went down south on that phase seven. So it's taken PG-18 outside the circle. The one member of Elga Ganton holds on to the only compound as a four-man squad better look next time. who stayed fairly quiet are going to make their way in from the east. Double died out to the play zone for Moops. So that leaves him with yeah. only two players as well. Better luck next time looking for back-to-back -back wins. Up. Could that be possible? Clib still doing damage, but he finally goes down. Hawkey does manage to find him. Moops going to be very happy with that one. But a sixth place and all those kills for Tempers. This is going to be a potential huge game. Better luck next time, though they are the ones there who want to go. make this work. And look what they're dealing with. So many players are already down and out of it. Air Station might grab in a fifth place again. It's like their key number for these guys. They love the fifth place. Five is a magic number for them. Well, also followed with a couple of chicken dinners, of course. Um, as we are down to three teams, PGA Ooh. got eliminated. Seven players left standing. Two man team moops. One man Norcus and a three man better than next time. Oh, poor Norcus. Spotted out. Good effort. He's just yep. trying to hold on, right? There's only so much you can do from a position like that. But either way, he's not going to complain. Now Moops, two versus four. Ghidoran, very low on health. Needs to try and heal himself up. Hawk is actually able to get the first wow. knock in. Game on. This is a chance. Fates and Kissick, they are knocked out. And it's happening. Hawkey, he's playing it a one-man army. Let's look at Hawkey. Let's see what he can do from here. Fates just going to allow himself to die out to the zone. And that's going to be a win for Team Moops with 10 kills on Sanok. You said Moops have looked great on Sanok. And they've proven it once again.
But I can't help but think that better look next time. They had that man advantage. Mm-hmm. One had been locked down by um, the remaining member of El Gigantin. Yep. So it was a 3v2. If they had to be more aggressive, they probably could have gotten the better of Team Oops, but they gave too much space. The knockdown after knockdown came out, yeah. and it was the final blow. Well, that final blow was the way to get the job done. Hawkey, little one-man army moment for him there at the end. Jesus. And this is where things really kicked off. Things did not slow down all of today. No. It has been madness from start to finish. Kills galores, nice individual plays, solid team plays, some confusing scrappy plays. And we talk about the Elgig moment that they had earlier on on a wrangle. But overall, today has shown us that these teams are giving it their all on this last hurdle. Four games remain, Cormac, and this is what it comes down to. I just can't believe Tempest. <coughs> I just can't believe Tempest. They they just were so aggressive in <coughs> this game. They were like a freight train pushing through the map, person after person, kill after kill, squad after squad. Yeah. They were put down eventually by the guts of Team Moops. And again, if there's any team that was going to put, put them down, it was Team Moops. So it was still a valiant effort all the same. <sighs> Time and time again, we saw these individual little players come out. This was Deep waiting to try and get revenge, and that's exactly what he tried to get done there for his teammates. Nades galore. And the nade meta really just comes into its own when you yep. see moments like this. Going back to the moops, though, you know when Tempest approached onto them? Yes. I really like that Double was on top of the building. That's a very yeah. open area. It's a scary spot to fight from. He has teammates behind him. But that key kill, if that didn't happen, I think moops would have lost that nine times out of True. ten. That was the, his moment because he got the kill and didn't hang around there. So when nope. they came back out to find him, he'd already jumped down. And they were able to then push in the building as a two-man unit and deal with the rest of them because Clib had already buggered off to the side. And I think that was – I, I <coughs> actually really think that was clever play from Clib. Normally, I'd kind of say, well, you had the man advantage. You could have pushed forward. But in those moments when kind of time is against you, you, you take control of your own kind of destiny, your own fate. And that's what Clib did, and it paid off for him. He got more kills, and he got Tempest in a higher position overall. And that is exactly what you want to do. I want to see how many kills Tempest overall got, though. It was hard to keep track of the amount that was coming in, but what an impressive end there for Hawkey. And here we have it. No tag team, MJ and Red Foxes all walking away with zero. And Red Foxes, there wasn't much they could do. Clib had you marked from the very beginning. I could watch that highlight over and over again because Clib impressed me once again. Yeah, and Red Foxes, as I said, they don't like Sam Hawk. They haven't found their groove in it. This is Team Moops, 10 kills. Tempus with 11, two placement points, 13 for them. Better look next time. Even though at the end I said they could have been more aggressive, getting eight kills? They, I know kind of the, the kill feed and, and the focus was so much on the likes of um, Tempus, but man, better look next time. Getting eight kills, they did some work in the end, and six kills for Clib alone, followed by Fate of Better Luck next time getting five, and Hawkey from Team Moops getting five. And five when most of that came at the end, right? When he was yeah. picking them apart, three of those five were the ones he got done. Moops do get the job yeah. done, and how close this all was between these two teams. Both of them, remember, coming from opposite sides of the map yep. and then converging in the center to take this battle. And, well, Moops, they came out top this time and managed to walk away with 20 match points. But better luck next time. They will not be complaining about today a win and then this second place. Like, I know we do head-to-head -head <coughs> stats, but I, I, I kind of wish we could do, like, three team stats and include Tempest because they fully deserve to be in that mix. But this was the head-to-head -head between Hockey and Faith. 541 damage, five kills. So five for five, great conversion rate, mm -hmm. followed by those knockdowns, helping each other's team. Well, what you were just saying there about Tempest, right? A sixth place and 11 kills. The 11 kills, you've got to think again, they were fighting yeah. from... They, they eliminated the first team. They fought every time. Like, there was non-stop fighting. And they were still made, managed to get into the top eight where we've seen many teams fall down and not be able to do that. And Tempest propel themselves into third place comfortably now, not even far behind Northern Lights. Moops Ow. in fourth, better luck next time in fifth. Red Fox is sixth, Joker seventh, and Istanbul Wildcats have gone from 10th to 8th today. But they are right on the edge. Look at this, Istanbul Wildcats, PG-18, El Giganta, no tank team. Anything can change. Sorry, even Brute Force, I'm not ignoring you guys. All of you guys can still make this happen. Unique, MJ. Huge potential and four kings. You guys are either going to really drop the ball tomorrow or yep. you have to bring another level that you've never shown us before. Yep, 25 points dividing a number of those teams. 
couple of them in the top eight. But this was it. PG-18, Tempest. Better luck next time mm -hmm. with Team Moops. All your chicken dinner winners for today's games. Now, the final four games of Group B, ladies and gentlemen, will be starting tomorrow at 7 p.m. CEST. Remember, if you are a PUBG fan, you have PUBG every single day of the week between PUBG Europe contenders and the yep. PUBG Europe League on Fridays to Sundays. So you can never miss a moment of PUBG action when it comes to it. And you've got me and Cormac to take you through the games tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day for Group B. And after that, the top eight from Group A and B meet together in one squad. And remember, these guys would have not faced each other. So yep. They could be having spots that they share. They're going to have to look at this and say, okay, who's going to give up? And what we saw last time around was some of these teams would drop in the same location and it would be who would win first or who would just stay there longer and not yep. care. Because eventually you've got to decide that this isn't benefiting either of us, no. but who's going to hang on longest? Who's going to be the most stubborn? So I'm excited when we get to that next week, but we still have one more day of this week, guys. Thank you very much for joining us the whole way through. I survived another day. My throat is still intact. Hopefully the blood will stop by tomorrow. And I definitely feel like it was better today, right? We've gone on it to was, a... It it, it's happened. But because the games are so hyped, I feel like I'm going to be wrecked as soon as we finish. You're so. going to wake up tomorrow and just kind of go... Oh, yeah, that's it. It seems like, kill me now. <laughs> just end it. I don't want this anymore. But we'll wait and see. Maybe I will be here. Maybe I won't. Hopefully I will. But hopefully you guys will be back, most importantly, 7 p.m. CST tomorrow. See you then.